Hey, I know this episode was supposed to be about how I cope with all the issues, but I've got a new hobby I wanted to introduce to you. And uh, this is also a way that I cope with all the issues. Uh, very hilarious guy. Go for Mike McGargy. Your next comic, Mike McGargy, everybody. Make some noise. Keep these good times rolling. We're nearing the halfway mark. Uh, put your hands together for Mike McGarvey. All right, let's keep that cancer train rolling. <laughs> I have been doing stand up for more than six, six days. <laughs> so, season, season veteran. I'm a prostate cancer survivor. I'm actually a prostate and cancer patient. <laughs> survivor sounds so much better than patient. Like, yeah. So I'm a survivor as opposed to mental patient. Um, prostate cancer is actually the number one killer of comedy routines in America. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Um, I don't know if you know what a prostate is. I didn't know until I got cancer in mind. It's a very important male organ. It produces the seminal fluid, okay? And so the sperm mixes with the semen, so it can be deposited in, um, you know, vagina, butthole, mouth, tissue. I think those are the big four. Um, and you gotta think about, if you didn't have that, we'd be emitting semen or sperm, like puff balls. It's going through the air. Teenage boys' bedrooms would have zero visibility. <laughs> um, and, you know, random uh, sperm flight through the air. Could, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but we have impregnate household pets. We have weird, weird hybrids. Like, And I'm not even talking about cute hybrids like a cat who can talk. I'm talking about, like, horrifying crimes against nature like cats in the movie. <laughs> So, so, yay, prostate. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a warning to all you guys out there. I was diagnosed two years ago with a digital exam. Digital exam is a finger up the foot. Might have been two fingers. Um, and shortly after, they confirmed it at an actual medical establishment, as opposed to the gym locker room where they had first exam happened. He told me, he told me he was a doctor. <laughs> and he nailed the diagnosis. I mean, give that guy a diploma <laughs> when he gets out of juvie. <laughs> um, yeah, so they had to get rid of the prostate. It was, it was advanced, they had to get rid of the prostate. So, so then it's recovery time. And that's tough because, you know, the tissues, the nerves, they've been all been, you know, jobbed around. It's, it's kind of tough. The, um, you know, your whole groin is, has been trauma. Your dick is a trauma <laughs> survivor. There you go. Not a Viagra patient. <laughs> uh, um, so eventually healed, and uh, everything was okay. And then they said, oh no, the, the cancer cells got out of the prostate. Well, that sucks. So I got prostate cancer with no prostate, which just doesn't seem right, but apparently it's like, it's like uh, French toast, you know? Like, it's not just toast when you're eating outside of France. So, <laughs> so I mean, this is what I understand, anyhow. Uh, it's all good. It's all okay. Uh, I've had two different treatment regimes, and I'm on the third, the last one. It's two years, and what it is is hormone therapy, where they kill your ability to produce testosterone because that's what the cancer cells do. And that should do it. Uh, but I tell you what, I kind of like testosterone. Uh, my doctor, a month after the first shot, he says, uh, hey, congratulations, you have zero testosterone. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the goal, but it doesn't sound good coming from a doctor or, you know, from a date in your 20s when you said, this has never happened to me before. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, if somebody heard that, that would, that would be bad. Um, but yeah, it's okay. It's um, a lot of side effects. I've sidestepped some of them. I work out really hard. I eat well. Uh, so I haven't gained fat, which is one of them. Lost muscle mass, bone mass. You know, that's another one. One, uh, there's actually a sizable percentage of guys that um, grow breast tissue. Hey, my eyes are up here. <laughs> uh, so that hasn't happened to me. Um, but I have gotten fatigue and joint pain and hot, flat, hot flashes. Holy shit, I've got hot flashes. 
Uh, in fact, my doctor had said to me, um, you are functionally, this is great, you are functionally a menopausal woman. <laughs> Thanks, Doc, you know just what a gal likes to hear. Um, but on the plus side, with the hot flashes and all that, I'm, um, I'm kind of like cat dip to uh, middle-aged women right now. I mean, I can, where are they gonna find a guy where you can sit around, drink wine, um, you know, watch Lifetime movies and uh, share menopause tales, right? <laughs> so I'm in demand, I'm in demand. But I'm a little worried because I, uh, I'm a little worried I'm losing some of my masculinity. There's some things I used to be able to do that I just can't do anymore. It, it's, uh, it's vanishing from me like uh, road rage. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I was good at, at road rage. And the other day I'm driving down the road, this guy's walking kind of slowly across, right? And I have to stop. And you know what my reaction was? It was, oh, that poor guy. I, uh, you know, I too have felt the need to walk slowly on occasion. What the fuck? What has happened to me? Two years ago, I would have nailed the response, which is, hey, get the fuck out of the road. Screw you. Screw your stupid Spider-Man backpack and your stupid elementary school. And then another one. I used to be almost like a prodigy at mansplaining. Uh, yeah, mansplaining for the women out there. Just <laughs> when... I mean, but look, I couldn't even finish the bit. Look at me. I don't, I don't even recognize myself. Who's the monster that I've become? I don't know. And the answer is, you know, honestly, I'm not a monster. I, I, my doctor was right. I've become a menopausal woman. The NCAA agrees. I'm actually, truly uh, qualified to compete as a woman, <laughs> according to my res test results. It's amazing. Um, and, you know, it's not bad. Womanhood is, is a wonderful thing. I shouldn't shy away from it. Um, I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot from this. And, uh, like, you know, I appreciate motherhood so much more. Growing a being in your belly, it's just, it's phenomenal. I mean, of course, in my case, it was a tumor. But I've seen some babies that I wouldn't exactly brag about. <laughs> so, um, the... Um, it's also, you know, caring and empathy. I, I'm developing caring and empathy. I've only got six more months in this in this treatment. Then I'll be back to, you know, testosterone. But, you know, like I am, I am empathetic for people that I never was before. Like, for example, I'm empathetic now. I'm learning empathy for men who mansplain. Like, you know, am I right, my sisters? They, they would not have to mansplain if we didn't say so much stupid shit. You know? Well, that's my time. And I'm going to run out that exit as fast as I possibly can. You've been a very empathetic crowd, you pussies. Michael Garvey, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot. I hope to come back sometime. I've got a solid 10 minutes on athlete's foot. You've been a wonderful crowd. <laughs>